Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Watch What Crappens, the podcast for all the crap we love to talk about on Ye Old Bravs, that's where. I'm Ronnie. With me today is the gorgeous and talented and good-hearted Ben Mandelker. Ben, hello. Welcome to your show. Hi. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Good. How are things up in Katona, New York? Oh, my God. They're freezing cold. Freezing cold. I am here. My feet have been cold for about five straight days now. Um, I'm really looking forward to um, just someplace that's warmer for my feet. But other than that, it's been really wonderful. It's great to be home. Great to see my parents. My little chili-footed friend. Dunkin donuts. You know, cold brew. Even though I'm freezing, I still drink my cold brew. I don't care. And, you know, all is good. What's going on with you? Good. Nothing. I just feel like a really strong person because I went to the Botox lady today and I was supposed to get a micro needling. I feel like this is my safe space because it's Beverly Hills Day and, um, you know, rubber face. So feel safe. Um, and I actually said, you know what? I'm going to skip the micro needling today because I feel like my skin is too thin. <laughs> I, was like, wow. I feel like I have tissue paper for skin, and I think I'm officially going to step back for a little while. And they were like, oh, is it something we did? And I was like, no, it's something you're doing too much of. Oh, wow. It's really difficult when you're suddenly gorgeous. Let me tell you, you can't just start walking into home goods just suddenly being gorgeous. It's too much too soon. So I said, lady, back the fuck off. And she said, you know what? So we're not doing the Botox? I said, no, get your ass back in here with the Botox, okay? Everything else you were going to shoot me up with, shoot me up with that, okay? But, um, you know, the, the face, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with my own facial oils for a while. What do you think of that? Wow, well, your skin looks resplendent as usual. And, um, I mean, I'm surprised there has not already been a spinoff Facebook group dedicated to your... <laughs> your skin and your face at this point skin journey. because it is it is a it is a popular topic of conversation on social media it is um and love in all it. our comments so you're doing great work the love people it. love it thank and you they love, they love your face and you know uh, i'm sure there's someone out there that likes my face too i don't know they but, love uh, your face they're just <laughs> used to you being gorgeous darling it's not new it's nothing new ben Okay. No, uh, I do nothing for my face, so I don't know why I would ever expect any sort of compliment about my face because you actually take care of your face. I don't. So uh, I would not expect anything um, until I actually start putting Well, stuff you've on already my face. been the hot one. It's like Gigi, it's like Gigi Hadid suddenly expecting Barely. a compliment. Like you, you've been a supermodel. No. I'm just catching up, darling. All right, so this isn't about how gorgeous we are. Um, <laughs> You're very gorgeous. I just, that's what I did today. You know what? We're here to share our lives. No, just kidding. We're here to trash other people's. But guess what? We do have coming up in our real life, uh, the Crappy Awards, the Golden Crappy Awards. We're so excited. February 17th, Los Angeles live show. Huge theater. Huge people. Huge show. Huge times coming up. You can come see us live. We would love that. You can also watch us online on the internet. Um, get your live streaming tickets for that now. Right now. God damn it! And um, we'll be doing that as well. That's a fun party online. Everybody goes in there, trash talks and stuff for the whole show. And uh, you can watch that for up to a week after the show. So do that. We're also on video today. Hi. Um, Hi. You can get these videos the day they're released over on our Patreon, which is also where you get our bonus episodes. This week is a recap of Southern Hospital. And um, also, you can get the videos for free over on YouTube a week after they've been released. But if you want them fresh, listen, you know, we're not trying to, to gouge you. We're still giving shit away for free over here, okay? But if you do want to give us money, you get quicker recaps on video. And look what you're getting. All of this. <laughs> um, anything else you want to talk about before we dive into this very religious day of recapping? We've got this and we've got Miami, both of which had large chunks take place in chapels. Big church energy on Bravo yep. for Wednesday night. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, only one of them featured a furious dog fight, an actual dog fight, uh, a legitimate fight about dogs. So, <laughs> but you're gonna have to wait till the Miami recap for that because that was amazing. <laughs> You're this gonna have great... to wait for us to talk about throwing chicken breasts in the water as <laughs> if dogs are fish um, for the next recap. That'll be coming up tomorrow. Yeah, uh, you know what I will say about this episode? Um, like, 
I'm I'm starting to think like I'm liking Erica. Like she was cracking me up all episode long. I feel like Erica I've we've sort of we've been saying this all season, but I feel like she's arrived for me. Like she is now more on the like side of the diagram than the dislike side. The needle has moved for me. I think she is hilarious. I think that she is we're getting real Erica now, where she doesn't she truly doesn't give a fuck and she's over people's bullshit and she's cracking me up i cannot believe it yeah you know when people are new on the show as an audience we always have to give them at least a year or two right because the seed is planted the bitch flower blooms year two we all know that and um erica she's you know i'm not saying she's just now entertaining i mean erica's been on the show a long time now and she's definitely had moments here and there and she's just had horrible moments and but this is the first year i feel like she's truly herself she's just mm. been you know the first few years she was her fake persona or whatever she was going for and then she was her rena persona you know those two together and this is the first year that she's been completely ripped down. Like they would say to a remodeled house, we took it down to the studs. I mean, mm -hmm. she's been taken down to the studs yep. and they've restarted Erica. <laughs> yeah. And she's just got that kind of rawness. I mean, she's still completely full of shit. I mean, she wouldn't be on the show if she wasn't. It's, that's a requirement to be on this show. But um, it's in such a much more fun way. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah. It's, it's I'm long and short of it. I agree with you. Yeah. I also, I love the dinner party on this episode. It was so funny how they, they brought in like, you know, the intelligentsia of Barcelona and all the real housewives had to sort of be on their best behavior. It's like, if you tell the real housewives, oh, Denise Richards is coming over with Camille Grammer. They're just going to, you know, fight and squabble and confront each other at the table. But if you say, oh, uh, like some esteemed architects are going to come over and an expatriate, they're like, act civilized <laughs> yeah be polite <laughs> yeah um which were they i mean i don't know i another thing i have to say about this season just as sort of a macro not the most exciting season still i think it's going to prove that you'd really do not have to be fighting and screaming and yelling and making up stupid arguments about dumb shit to make a good show it shows i think that this these shows really are more about they're about more than just that you know because i right. think the stereotype of these shows and part of the reason we always say oh these shows are boring is because nothing's happening a lot of times we even take that to mean like no one's fighting about anything this sucks no one's fighting about anything here and it's fucking hilarious i was dying laughing watching this show so yeah. so good what a pleasure to just watch a bunch, bunch of crazy rich people or even crazy poor people just wanting to get rich again you know yeah. however however they're mixing it all together i'm enjoying it yeah, I think it's actually a really good season. And um, also Sutton. I also want to say I am just fascinated by Sutton's life. And this episode was really a lot about Sutton and her backstory. And, she, like, her life really plays out like it's a book, right? Like, she was a dancer in New York in ballet. And then she gets swept up by this, like, wealthy dude. And she has just, like, this – she like, even her, her gay best friend, who she's reunited with in Spain – he is like exactly the gay best friend you would see in the movies. Like this did, and it felt very Vicky Cristina Barcelona. It was just like Sutton is sort of her own movie, which is kind of amazing, and I love that. You know, I think that's like my dream is seeing a a like a lady, a middle aged lady living a movie life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, listen, they're the only things I still pay to go see. I'll tell you that much. This. <laughs> The, I so actually didn't seeing. see, and this isn't middle age, but I missed um, eighty for Grady. What is it? Eighty for Brady. Eighty for Brady. Sorry, I don't, under, I don't, I don't understand sports people or why we would put them yeah. in movie titles. But um, there you go. That's, and I think that's why I didn't go see it because those are like four legend ladies, and I was like, mm, Grady, yeah. no, yeah. Um, I love that cast. I didn't see it because I just feel like I don't see a lot of movies that much anymore. That being said, they looked like they had a great premiere party. Wish we could have been there. 
uh, but we weren't invited. And so that's my little way of saying. Um, <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine, how you look at every movie? Wow. I'm like, invite us to movie premieres if you. <laughs> we're literally not invited to any movie. I mean, is that really? Like, you know, we I heard that no Killers movie, of the uh, Flower Moon is, is pretty good. Unfortunately, <laughs> Marty didn't invite us to that one. So they can go the, fuck themselves. I love that that's the that. movie I decided to go after. I was like, you know what? We should get invited to movie premieres. No, because they invited other podcasters and bloggers and stuff. So I'm like, you know what? 80 for Brady. <laughs> Welcome We're, to welcome to our life. Yeah, I don't know. Then I don't know why, why I got mad about us? that. You just like you somehow like triggered something in me where I felt like I needed to like. <laughs> we're not invited anywhere. We're not. Uh, no, news flash. Like the, Let me tell you why we're not invited anywhere. Because every time we are invited, we're like, oh my god, thank you so much. We go, we have a good time. We take the Tupperware out of our trunks and pack all of the food in it to take home. And then the next day, we talk shit about all the people. Okay, that's. <laughs> But yeah, that might but have we something do that to privately do privately to each other on in the Uber back. We don't do we don't we don't we don't shit on the attendees on our podcasts. <laughs> um we do. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fun of it. We're we just gonna go I kiss Sally like... Field's ass now. But listen, I'll, I'll what's the point of going to eighty Field's for Brady ass. if you're not gonna go rip Sally Field a new asshole? You know what Listen, I mean? Listen, you know the way I operate. You know how I come out of those parties being like, oh my God, the way, the way that Mary Elizabeth Mastri Antonio passed me that ketchup packet, <laughs> she is so nice. She was so nice, guys. You do come out of them like that. And I'm like, Mary Master Antonio, what a fucking asshole. <laughs> I've never seen anybody pass ketchup so rudely. Like, who who am I to you? Nobody? I can tell by the way you just passed me that ketchup. That Cameron Mannheim let me cut in front of her at the bar. I was like, she is so down to earth. She is such a down to earth, nice person. I really loved her. I'm like, Cameron Mannheim, wow. Haven't improved that personality since Boston Legal, huh? Stay out of my fucking way, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, as far as this show goes, Beverly Hills, which we're recapping today, uh, Crystal has high blood pressure. Join the fucking club, okay? <laughs> I, I asked Siri why I had it, and she said I ate too much salt. Well, you can go fuck you. You can put yourself in a van with Cameron Mannheim, Sally Fields, and Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio, and drive right over the fucking cliff in Spain. Will... That's what I have to say. I'm not giving up my pretzels for anybody. We are not putting Sally Field in that van. I'll tell you one thing. Those other two, fine. <laughs> Sally Field is protected status. Did you know that um, high blood pressure is a silent killer? That's what they told me today at the Botox place. She's like, Ronnie, you need to take more serious, take this more seriously. It's a silent killer. I was like, really? Because it's literally blamed for so many deaths. So no, it doesn't seem so silent to me. <laughs> it seems My like it's getting, it's up. taking a lot of heat. I'm I I my blood pressure's up, and I'm like mad about it because I'm like. Uh, I'm just mad about it. <laughs> I'm like, stop that. I'm, you know, and I'm trying to eat lower, less, less salt, but there's just like salt everywhere. There's you salt everywhere. I try to, I try to have like a low sodium thing, but every, there's salt everywhere. There's salt. You salt, know what else salt, is everywhere? everywhere peanut M&Ms. Like, like you scenery. cannot get away. It's like you order a salad. There's peanut M&Ms as the croutons on the salad. You Anywhere you go, you order a pizza, there's a side of peanut M&M's. They're fucking everywhere. I can't get away from them. Mostly because I keep buying them and pouring them all over things. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, salt and cholesterol. Like, you know what's fucked up? You try to go out and have something low cholesterol. And then, you you know, you go to the ice cream parlor and you're like, all this ice cream is high in cholesterol. It's just, like, so fucked up that as I eat this ice cream, like, that it's so high in cholesterol. Like, why does it have to be that way? Why can't they, like, not be this way? Yeah. Guess that's what makes and then I go to the steakhouse, and I'm like, this is fucked up. Why is everything so high cholesterol? <laughs> I hate when I go to a go-go bar, and there's just so many dicks hitting my face. <laughs> horrible. Okay, so Crystal is on the side of the road, because she too has high blood pressure, okay? And Anne-Marie, the medic of the group, is uh, checking her out and doing things like saying, squeeze my fingers. Fuck you. What, are you going to fart? I don't trust people. <laughs> I don't trust him. So Crystal's like, they feel like tingling. These are stroke-like stroke symptoms. So Crystal is like me. She's a hypochondriac, and she has learned the symptoms of stroke, which, you know, I feel like I've learned them at some point, but I always forget them, which I think in some ways is good because if I actually knew them, I would think I'm having a stroke literally every single day. Cause I'm yeah, don't Google that. I Definitely. cannot I cannot learn about the symptoms to anything 
because then I automatically assume that I have it. Like it is so bad with me. So, dude, seriously, um, I've been walking around for three weeks. Like, oh my fucking esophagus! I swear to God. Oh my God! If I yeah. could just get a good stretch in my esophagus, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I have everything all the time. <laughs> But apparently I do have high blood pressure and high cholesterol, so I do have those things. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks for giving me that. So <laughs> I've had it since last night, that's for sure. So Dorit's like, she's green. She's sweetie. Her hands are swollen. Is it Halloween? Are you dressed like picky? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's her hands are her hands are puffier than PK wearing a thumb finger. <laughs> I was like, you know, you just described the love of your life, right? <laughs> it's like, it's like, Dorit, are you reporting PK missing right now? Or are we talking about Crystal <laughs> being in a van waiting for an ambulance? Dorit goes to Crystal. She says, you're supported. Everyone's here. Don't do not worry. It's like, I don't think she cares about having your support now, Dorit. Her veins are popping out of her skin. <laughs> I don't think like Dorit Kemsley's support is really the like a high priority for her right now. And nothing is gonna make me run towards the light like Dorit standing by my side in her fake Chanel claiming <laughs> that she supports me, okay? Stay over there. So Anne Marie's like, um, okay, guys, guys, here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna lay down and you're gonna like, um, you're gonna relax, okay? Because someone's gonna come here soon. Nailed it. I'm nailing it. I'm basically in an episode of ER right now. Because everyone for the rest of this episode is like, oh my God, Anne Marie was so amazing with Crystal. It's like she told her to lie down. What else do you tell people? Well, it's funny because she goes, this is like not just like a lay down and drink some ginger ale situation. And then she's like, okay, so lay down. <laughs> she literally did that. Um, so what then... is she going to tell her? Okay, you know what? You, you're, uh, you feel like you're about to faint? Do some jumping jacks right now. Like, of course you're going to tell her to lay down. That's literally all you can do. You're on the side of a road, for Christ's sake. Crystal's like, I'm so sorry, guys. And Marie's like, it's not a situation you need to feel sorry about. It's not like, I don't know, claiming that I said I was a doctor when I was a nurse. I mean, you could feel sorry about that, but not this. Don't feel sorry <laughs> about this. And Dorit's like, Crystal, honey, when you're okay, we'll go sightseeing. We're all going to be here for you. Except, Kyle, where did Kyle go? You know Kyle's down at the Hermes store already. Like, God, I don't give a fuck about Crystal. So Anne Marie is like, yeah, I mean, like, given that Crystal is like repeatedly insulting and degrading my profession, which she never fucking did, she called you a liar again. She did not insult nurses. Okay, she insulted you in particular. Yeah, <laughs> don't make this. Don't make this about Nurse all nurses gate. everywhere, ma'am. Yeah. Just, the irony of what is happening right now is literally shocking. I give the amount of irony in this situation an 8.5 out of 10. And Amber is <laughs> like, she, and then she says, Crystal's like lying there in the bed, uh, I'm in the van, sort of freaking out. And she goes, okay, okay, everyone, I don't, I just, I don't want her to get up and have like a hypertensive crisis of something and then just like stroke out, you know? I'm like, uh, could you like ixnay on like the, uh, scary uh diagnosis a eh? what is she like i would <laughs> don't say that crystal's already freaking out don't say that if she moves she's gonna have a hypertensive crisis and have a stroke bedside manner find bedside it manner. find it okay is there a bedside manner store anywhere we can go shopping at because you need some but also it's funny that she's saying um you know the irony of her needing me now in my medical professional capacity oh my god she's gonna die she's gonna die her head's about to explode her head is about to pop off okay here's what we get to do i'm gonna hit her on the back i'm gonna hit her on the back perfect perfect up perfect up okay crystal do not move an inch otherwise your arms may literally fall off your body i'm just telling you right now <laughs> and kyle's like oh my god don't talk like that when she's having an episode and Emery's like, sorry, not that that would ever happen. Not that your head would ever pop off or you'd go knock knees suddenly and lose all your hair. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, the ambulance is coming. The ambulance is coming. So they come and they take her vitals and she does have high blood pressure. I'm kind of winning. <laughs> not that it's a race, but my entire. So I win. Woohoo! What did I win? Hope it's some M&Ms with some salt on top. <laughs> I don't know if I feel like I should laugh with long. I'm like, should I, do I, do I yes and this? Um, so, <laughs> so Anne Marie is like, what can you do? Like, it's not going to go down instantly. I'm taking the pills. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So, um, 
So then Anne Marie. Pretzel pills. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I have to say, Anne Marie's bedside manner is better than when I learned I had high blood pressure. Because my blood pressure is always sort of like trend like a little high, like a little higher than what it should be, but nothing too crazy. And then I went to the I went to the dentist in November. And my dentist, they just take your blood pressure. I guess I don't know. I just think it's good. They do that, and yeah, because so, they can't give you the um the down the uh, numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then, the dental hygienist goes, have, "Do you have high blood pressure?" And I was like, "Yeah, I can run a little bit high." She goes, oh, "I mean, you're almost at like stage two hypertension." But she like lost her mind, and it was like it was high, but it was not like. A disaster. So then, of course, that made my my blood pressure go even higher. And by the time that they're like, "We'll test you again at the end of the session," and then it was like so high afterwards because she was like, "Oh my god, everyone, buckle up! He's about to blow!" I was like, <laughs> I was freaking out. <laughs> it has since lowered. I would. I'm proud to say. Yeah. Well. Except as I sit here drinking a enormous um, <laughs> just atomic too. bomb size Dunkin' Donuts cold brew just to make sure I get those numbers right back up again. Well, first off, what kind of old ladies are we that this is literally how we podcast now? <laughs> we <do. laughs> and furthermore, we've sat here. We when just I did here, try we to open... go to the 80 for Brady premiere, they said you can't come in with that blood pressure machine. Said, well, with... How am I supposed to monitor my blood pressure during this movie? It could we be a started with movie. Botox, then we moved into uh, blood pressure, then we moved into 80 for Brady and black back into blood pressure. Wow, we're really something. Hopefully, we can get some Matlock references in here. Sure, watch can. out. <laughs> sure, can so, so Anne Marie offers to go to the hospital with Crystal, but they're like, Sorry, you don't have the necessary passes. And she's like, How dare you degrade my profession? <laughs> so they take her away. And none of that happened. I'm just lying, everybody. It sounded By the like way, it could be real. Also, I want to say one thing really quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know there are going to be some very well-meaning people out there listening to this podcast who are going to hear this discussion and are going to be very concerned for us. And they're going to send an email encouraging us to go to the doctor, et cetera, et cetera. And all I'm going to say is, like, I have been to the doctor. Ronnie's been to the doctor. And if you send an email, you'll probably just make us paranoid and nervous so, so please don't email yeah our laughter this. comes from comes from utter fear we know we're in trouble both <laughs> we, of us know we're in trouble we are, we are taking care of it don't worry ryan and i obviously have talked about this before but like we are taking care of it so like just don't email us because because i know someone's gonna say honestly you guys have to get that checked out because five people in my family died from it so i don't know we know <laughs> yeah we me, know. don't send me that email yeah we shouldn't be laughing about it but we are because that's how we deal with that's how we deal with pain We're laughing um, at also i'm going to the doctor baylor scott and white i'm on my way okay making an appointment okay so make so, my way to the doctor go on um <laughs> that's enough aging us right now Sutton's like, okay, we're going to let you go, okay? So you can get treated. Then we can all make paella together, which apparently is good for blood pressure, I think. <laughs> is, is, is paella a good thing for blood pressure? I'm not sure that it is. Let's I don't know, but when I'm on death's door, I'm not really worried about making it to your cooking class. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> Sutton's like, don't worry. You're going to live, and you're going to come to my cooking class. You're going to live, and then tomorrow night we're going to give you salty rice. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, paella class to look forward to. Like, don't go to the light because there's paella on this side. And Crystal, and then Dorit's like, Crystal, I'm sending you a big hug and kisses. Now close your eyes. You just got a pie in the face, courtesy of the cast of Peter Pan Live on Ice. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the chapel real quick. We're gonna light candle in the chapel. And Erica's like, oh, Jesus, I did this shit. I prayed to the saint, all right? I've done it. I had a chapel in my goddamn house. Jesus. <laughs> and we see flashbacks of that. And then um, Sutton's like, well, we're all going to do this as a group, okay? So, and Garcelle's like, yeah, maybe don't say shit as much about the church. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, but I had a chapel in my old house. So we see her old house. That chapel was um, built on the backs of victims. This one's more like <laughs> built... most chapels, let's be honest. <laughs> That's true. Listen. I really don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> no, I was going to say, was that a functioning chapel? I feel like that was a decommissioned chapel, let's be honest. 
I think that was probably in there so they could get some kind of religious deduction on their t- on their taxes, you know? Like that was like a part That's of a church. religious organization. <laughs> maybe maybe Katy Perry's going to come and kick someone out of it and take it over. You want to prove me wrong? Watch my music videos and see how often I'm on my knees. Oh, nail it. <laughs> how many prayers do I give? Um, so, um, anyway, they're going to go to the church and Dorit's like, so what, what did the church ever do to you, Erica? And she's like, a lot. And, um, then we see, by the way, Kyle is in this church already and she's, um, she's like putting a donation into the box, etc. Um, I'm like, I'm, I wonder, I'm just curious how much, like, obviously Kyle has converted to Judaism, how much is she still i don't know what she was before that but how much is she still christian and is she starting to go back to christianity as she now starts to pull away from mauricio oh my gosh i don't know that's too deep of a question for this show fuck (laughs) how about this what the fuck is up with kai's lashes (laughs) yeah thank you that now that there is a religion i can get behind (laughs) <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I feel like when she went up to that deposit box, she kind of looked inside and she put something in there. I feel like if we went and looked to see what was in there, it was a picture of her and Morgan Wade that she's going to later say. accuse the church of trying to spread gossip about her. You know, I did think it was weird when she tattooed a K onto the de- onto the onto the box. <laughs> I was like, whoa. She's like, well, this way you can just like <laughs> fill in the rest of the letter. You can start any word you want with a K. Uh, she's like drawing a K onto the statue of Jesus's arm. She's like, got you. Got you, Jesus. <laughs> um, so um, anyway, they're talking about church uh, and stuff. And Erica's like, I'm Catholic. Baptism, confirmation, married to the Catholic Church. There's no one here with clean hands. We're all sinners. The wind ain't gone? Sure. We gonna get him? He ain't coming for these sinned bitches, I'll tell you that, but nailed it. I'm back. (laughs) I'm back. (laughs) See, what's funny is that, like, Erica later on is talking like this, and they're like, oh, this is classic drunk Erica, but this is the morning now. She's not drunk. At least as far as we're concerned, as long as we, as far as we know. So uh, Garcelle's like, "Well, it's scary for Crystal to go to a foreign country hospital." And Erica's like, "I feel so bad." Really, I... try try working with your insurance at an American one, okay? I'd Ooh, much rather I'd, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather be in Spain at the moment during this blood pressure talk. Frankly, okay, Ben. Um, as on, someone sorry. who did once go to a foreign hospital, that would be me. It is not pleasant i will say it is not it's i once went when i was uh, in france i i had like bronchitis i guess but uh, i mean they it was bronchitis but but i thought it was pneumonia because it, it felt just like when i had pneumonia and so the thing is in, in paris you can't you're gonna hear the story ronnie in paris in paris you can't just like it's go to both the of us we're sick people <laughs> like what is wrong with us how much no, of this episode i'm trying to give you an international perspective okay so <laughs> so i was i was visiting a friend in paris so you can't just like go to a doctor and they can like give you some medicine you have to go to the pharmacy or if you or like the far if not the pharmacy then the hospital so i had to go to the hospital and i was there and i i had to wait hours upon hours upon hours and then they they gave they they wheeled me down to this like place to do an x-ray that was like in a dark hallway with the lights overhead swinging like a horror movie in a in a in a in a like a in a a, horror movie asylum (laughs) and then they were like okay we're gonna keep you over it looks like you've got bronchitis and we're gonna keep you overnight so they put me in in like the observation ward or whatever so they put me in the room and it was this dark room, and I was like in a bed, and there was like curtains next to me. You know, I was surrounded by curtains, but yeah. there were probably about like twenty other people or th- thirty people, and I would I, the lights went out, and this is all I would hear. <laughs> and then there was one guy. This was well, so. What do you French. expect to hear? A fucking well, no, no, no. jazz trio? You're in a hospital. <laughs> but, but what made it really unique? What made it feel so French was that there was there was an old man down like must have been like four beds away and he literally kept on doing this all night. Mademoiselle, Mademoiselle, and I was like, 
this is horrifying and hilarious. And then the next morning I woke up and it was, that night was the night of the Oscars that the, the, the artist won, which was a French movie. And so uh, the, the doctors came in and they're like, oh, you're American. Oh, Jean so-and-so, big star now, eh? Big star, the artist, big movie, eh? And I was like, I need to get out of here. <laughs> so yeah, going to a foreign hospital is a unique experience, but I don't think I need to do it again. <laughs> Wow. Um, well, I hope to have my opportunity one time. Mademoiselle! Mademoiselle, what the? <laughs> um, so, okay, so back to the show. Let's see what's happening here. So, Dorit is saying, Is it okay if I don't light a candle? And they're like, No, you don't have to light a candle. It's just church. So she tells us uh, that Jewish people don't pray in churches. I can set an intention. It doesn't have to be in a church. It could be out of the church, around the church, but setting an intention. You can you can do that while you brush your teeth or read a bag of Doritos as PK does. His I'd intention, like... last time I saw PK making an intention as he was eating Doritos. His intention <laughs> was to eat Doritos. <laughs> Uh, the PK, unfortunately, much like Crystal, has a hyper intention. So, um, <laughs> here's my intention. By the end of the year, I would like to be on ice as a mermaid with Boy George, but he's Captain Hook. And mm -hmm. someone has a cream pie, and they've thrown it in my face. While I'm singing, my heart will go on. I've set the intention. <laughs> Uh, so Sutton, uh, then yeah, everyone's lighting candles and it starts getting darker. So we won't make fun of this part. But they, Sutton's talking about her father and his suicide and talking about how growing up Catholic, uh, in the Catholic Church, they believe that you do not go to heaven when you uh, die of suicide, which is true. And that's how I was raised, too. I don't think the Episcopalians believe. I don't know. It's funny how religion is because I was always raised that way, that if you uh, die of suicide, that you don't go to heaven because you are wasting the life that God gave you or some some horseshit. And then later I told my dad that I said, because someone I know died of suicide and I was talking to my dad and I said, well, I guess, because you know, I've still got a lot of resentment. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but uh, I said something like, um, well, I guess he's not gonna go to heaven, huh? Huh, dad? Because, you know, I'm always wow. 13 years old around my parents. And uh, my dad was like, we never said that. That's not even true. We don't believe that. And I was like, since when? Since when don't you believe it? He's like, we've never believed. We've never taught you that suicide victims don't go to heaven. I was like, yes, you do. Why are you acting like this traumatic shit you told me as a kid? It's just I'm being made up. Uh, next, you're going to tell me that you never taught me that if people are allowed to be homosexuals, that the next thing we're going to do is allow them to marry a goat. And he said, I never said that. I said, you did. So I guess what I'm saying is the rules are just fucking rewritten all the time. And even seeing these people talk about church for five minutes has set me into a complete fucking tailspin. And I'm the bad guy because I want to go to the 80 for Brady premiere. <laughs> well, if Jesus didn't hate us so much for being gay, maybe he would have made that possible. <laughs> So um, they pray, they pray and stuff. So then Erica is saying, my intentions are life are to pick up and rebuild, move forward and be prosperous and get those fucking earrings back from whatever poor person is trying to get their greedy little nubby little hands all over them. But I'm still hurt that no one has really come over to me and said, hey, apologize. And then we see a headline, reality blurb, Erica Jane wins appeal over $750,000 earrings after the earrings were auctioned off to repay victims of Tom. Okay, so guess where I am right now. Are uh, you watching the video of Erica sitting down with the victims? Nope. I am on the Bravo Docket's Instagram. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> because Erica's just so full of shit, I can't with her. I knew it. I, when, court... when this came up, I was like, okay, here, pause for Ronnie to get... come on. You know, okay. talk about rewriting history. My dad doesn't get to say that he never taught me that being gay was akin to people being able to marry goats. And you cannot just say that you won back these years. You just, it's rewriting history and I will not have it. 
So according to the Bravo Docket, did which is a great podcast and great Instagram account, follow both, please. Uh, did a court actually rule that Erica was right and that the earrings were not purchased with client funds? First, some undisputed facts. In December 2020, Girardi and Girardi Keats were forced into involuntary bankruptcy and the bankruptcy trustee who discovered a suspicious withdrawal from a client trust account that was supposed to go to diabetes patients for a lawsuit over a diabetes drug. This is not to get us to start talking about diabetes, but I'm sure that we're both tempted to. Ben, you, you willing to pass on that one? Uh, Me too. Dish. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, Girardi <laughs> wrote a check from the client trust account for the diabetes patient for patients for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars payable to M M&M and M Jewelers. Which is that a coincidence? How much we love M and Ms on this show on March second, two thousand seven. After figuring out the earrings were purchased with client money from the trust account, the bankruptcy trustee asked Erica to turn them over. Erica refused. The bankruptcy trustee filed a motion for the earrings to be turned over, and the bankruptcy judge granted the motion. Then Erica filed appeal, an appeal. She lost the first time. Uh, she argued that the bankruptcy court is barred by the statute of limitations. Okay. So then second, she argued that the bankruptcy court failed to prove the earrings were the property of the bankruptcy estate. This is important because the bankruptcy court only has authority over property belonging to Tom Girardi or Girardi Keys. Are you following this? So this is no, basically her No, I'm not listening saying, anymore. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. You're right. This was longer than I thought. I always think Instagrams are going to be shorter. I, I, you know what? Honestly, I wanted to be like, no, of course I'm listening. But honestly... It's a lot. I, ha I had to, I, I, I just... To me, I just... Uh... Let me just make it short. This is the end, okay? <laughs> If the earrings were purchased entirely with money that never belonged to Girardi or Girardi Keys in the first place, the bankruptcy court may not have a claim to them. That's their argument. So since he stole that money from the victims, that money, those earrings were bought with victims money, which was never his. So she shouldn't have to give the earrings back. That's some sick shit. OK, so if you didn't listen to any other part, that was the main point. Sorry it took me so long to get there. I'll give it up now. <laughs> Dropping the bone. Actually, no, I do have – there actually was an item about um, one of the victims. Uh, so I, will, I am going to chime in with this. So one of the victims is named Lou, and that person is living with cancer. And so because of this whole situation, Lou and Lou's friends, they are planning to actually go to the Super Bowl um, be, before that she gets a message from her oncologist. And then Betty is a math professor – uh, that's one of her friends. They calculate they have a like a point zero zero one three percent chance of winning a calling contest to see the showdown between Brady's New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons. You're an asshole. <laughs> oh, and by the way, um, I've just found out that you are not invited to that premiere party. Either, so, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, the Bravo docket. <laughs> okay, so um, long and short of it, Erica's full of shit. So Crystal is, uh, we see a clip of Crystal saying, those are dead people that money was stolen from. Those are facts. And Erica's saying, uh-uh, I need to watch the legal process play out. So then Dorit's like, wow, what an amazing place to have a church, guys. Well done. Don't really understand the point, but what real estate? <laughs> I know. Dorita is saying a lot of sort of like empty things. It's just like, especially at the dinner party, she's like hilariously in her small talk mode. So now her being, what's an amazing place to have a church, you guys? Like, uh, we'll be sure to relay that to the architect's great great grandchildren. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes. Yeah, location, location, location. Listen. <laughs> One thing Christians and Jews have in common is the Old Testament. John 5 7. Location, location, location. A, B, C. Always be churching. So, <laughs> meanwhile, here comes like Chris Shell. It's like, you're a bad bitch, bad bitch, bitch, bad, bad. We're going to sell this church. It's my first listing in Spain. <laughs> I'm the smelly kid. <laughs> I was born in a shell station. Mm. So um, Sutton is actually having a nice moment with Kyle. She's talking about her, her dad and everything, and um, it's it's and, and Kyle is talking obviously about her, her friend um, Lorene, who also died uh, by suicide very recently. And you know Sutton's kind of comforting Kyle because Kyle is talking about how she spoke to a psychic, and the psychic said she saw Lorene and everything. And Sutton's kind of like. 
unfortunately, Kyle, you're just never going to get the answers. And it was like a very, very touching scene between the two of them. Yeah, and Sutton's like, I'm sorry, I've been such a bad friend. And Kyle's like, no, you've been a good friend. <laughs> I love you. And she's like, I love you. And Sutton says she hates fighting with Kyle, which is a shame because I love when you fight with Kyle. So listen, yeah. I just don't give it up completely. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what I yeah. say. And Kyle cares about Sutton a lot. And I was really hurt by all the questions she was asking about my marriage. And so I'm happy to accept her apology and move on because Lord knows every magazine cover is already about me and Maurizio and Morgan Wade. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now they're just they're going to go into Barcelona to sort of see the city a little bit more. And um, uh, they also uh, FaceTime, Crystal FaceTimes like Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie's like shocked by this, by the way. She's like, oh, oh my God, I oh, was not expecting this. Because now, of course, Crystal loves Anne-Marie. It's definitely like the Florence Nightingale effect, right? She's like obsessed with her now. She's FaceTiming her. And so she's on anti-nausea medication and feeling better. And so now we're seeing like Barcelona. We're seeing umbrellas hanging over a plaza or a street. We see architecture and Gaudi and the and remnants we of see America's something... Next Top Model runway show from many years ago. Then we see something that will stop me going to Barcelona ever. I never want to go now. Even though this has been a beautiful place, I've loved the episode, the photography's been great. Fuck that place. Let me tell you why. Because we meet Manolo, the oh. fucking tour guide, who can't just show you around a goddamn building. The guy has to stand there with a, gr uh, a fucking guitar on his knee, singing at me. Shut up. I did not pay for your fucking uh, karaoke, okay? What is this, the dueling piano? Get the fuck out of here. Show me where the mall is, sir. <laughs> uh, I interrupt this podcast to uh, present an announcement from the printer that is going off courtesy of my parents. <laughs> so if you hear the sound of paper coming out, here it comes. What is he printing? <laughs> here it goes. What is he constantly printing over there? Page one. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Uh, page two. What is it? Read it to us. I don't. I, I don't. It's my. You know, it's my. It's either my mom or my dad. It's their work. It's my mom. It's my mom's work. Oh, so no. congratulations, everyone. We got a real life printout during the podcast. <laughs> uh, uh, surprise page just blurted out. Oh, <laughs> and that last page just came vomiting out of the printer. That's All ready. Right. It's like trying well to hurry done. so it can be done. Well done, everyone. We got some pages for mom who's probably going to come in here in about 30 seconds. So everyone look forward to that. <laughs> so Manolo plays his music very bigly. And then he they're asking his name and he tells them Manolo. And Dorit's like, Grandma Blonik, that's you. Can I put my foot in your mouth? <laughs> Oh, oh my, I'm cramping on the left side now. <laughs> oh no, no more <laughs> Kyle's, medicals. Kyle's like, donde esta Hermes? Manolo's like, I don't know. So, um, by the way, it's so funny because in my mind, Manolo was on stilts, but he wasn't. But in my mind, he was on stilts. Manolo wasn't on stilts, but he was doing a thing, like he plays his guitar by lifting his leg and then resting the guitar on his knee while his leg is in the air. Yeah, he was giving stilt energy yeah he was Big giving stilt, stilt energy. energy yeah so he was doing that and so kyle's talking about how she just has to shop everywhere guys you should see me in a gas station like i can do it like in three minutes like i don't even care see? so she has to know where the hermes is and so she finds the hermes in every town that she's in and then that's like her center of town and then she can go so kyle is like trying on this persona this season of like she loves to shop uh, as if that's any different from any other real housewife. And she's, tr but like, she's like a little, like it's, for some people, if they did it, it's like fabulous. But with Kyle, it's like, mm, this isn't quite working because you can't do the whole thing of like, oh my God, once I find out where the Hermes shop is, that's the center of town. But then you're also doing the, ah, put me in a gas station and I can find anything in there. It's like, you're either doing the Hermes thing or you're doing the gas station thing, but you're not doing both. Well, hers is that she's just a shopping addict, you know, so it's not... She's trying to like, she's just putting the gas station in there because she also does Amazon Live. So she's, she's like, I can't just unbrand myself, you know. Is, I'm sorry, is, is Ronnie, she printing? Is your mother you writing a book? This... <laughs> Can you hear it? Is, is, she, is your mother the new Danielle fucking Steele? What's going on? Here over we there? go. Another document just came out. Fresh document. I feel like I'm at a diner. Oh hi, mom. 
welcome. No, it's okay. We've been documented. We've been. We've been. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her we've been reading her fan we've been, fiction. We've been announcing the documents as they pour out on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Bye. <laughs> the slow, unamused door creak. <laughs> oh, I gotta love podcasting from home. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Could you hear my mom? No, I no? no. It was like Charlie Brown's parents. Oh well, that's too bad. Anyway. No. That was a mom cameo, everyone. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, so now they go to lunch, and um, Anne Marie is FaceTiming her kids and stuff. And uh, she's like, Hi, guys. Um, uh, Daddy, I can't see you. And they're like, Daddy, Daddy doesn't want to be on camera, but he says you're a solid eight today. She's like, Oh, damn it. Well, tell him I've been stuck in the hospital all day. All right, I'll give you a 0.5 if you're good. He's like, uh, sorry, uh, we're we're kind of breaking up. Unfortunately, the uh, the Wi-Fi here is only an eight point five, so <laughs> I have to try in a different area. Uh, so they're like, "Oh my God, you call your husband, Daddy?" She goes, "Well, in front of the kids, I do." I mean, geez, because remember they had that lady who called her husband Daddy, and they were all like, "What a freak!" Do you remember that happening on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Who who was that? Carlton who called their husband Daddy. It was a one-season wonder. It was someone who was barely around. And was they it called... Catherine? I don't Did remember. She... I don't think Catherine called Donnie Daddy. She someone called, Donnie. called him Daddy, and they're like, oh, my God, what a fucking it's weirdo. Joyce? I think it was just a lady at a party that called her husband Daddy. And Kyle was like, gross. Who calls her husband Daddy? Because you know how Kyle gets mad at ladies at the party she thinks, is flir she thinks are flirting with Maurizio? I think it was yeah. one of those moments. I don't think it's... Um... I don't think it's crazy to call your husband daddy when you're like talking from the kids. Um, That's my hot take for the day. <laughs> <sighs> Can't believe I don't get these premiere invites. So um, everyone drinks are arriving and everything and they like, they're toasting to Crystal's health. Thank you for and... not making me formulate an opinion on that. And I was like, mm, yeah, my brain just stopped. I was, I was like, like, is do it I okay need to, to make call a... your husband dad? <laughs> do I have to make a stance on this? Is this where we're going to stop the podcast and talk? So Kyle is like, guys, it was like kind of interesting. It's so interesting how like you, Emery, and Crystal went last from like last night to today. Isn't that like funny? And everyone's like, ha ha ha. Everyone's like, I know. And Emery's like, you know, I take my profession really seriously, and it's like really like a part of me. You know what I mean? Huh? And Erica's like, no, and I know you felt very bad about not being able to go with her and tell her things in her ears like, don't worry, you're about to die. Any last words? And she's like, yeah, well, you know, it's like I felt horrible because Garcelle and I were talking this morning about her. And, you know, like calling me fake doctor and like the whole you're not a doctor thing. Like, that's hurtful. Are you a doctor? Why is it hurtful? Like, listen, when I try and go up to the front of the plane to get my air, my airplane pins, which I should my wing pins or whatever, which I still think I deserve. I don't care I if I'm this old. Is going. And they tell me you're not a pilot, <laughs> sir. And do I cry? Sure, but I get over it. <laughs> because at the end of the day, I have to admit that they're true. Yeah, I think uh, but I think clearly what Anne Marie interpreted Crystal saying was like, you're not a doctor, therefore you're worthless. But I think Crystal was saying, you said you were a doctor to me, and but you're not a doctor. <laughs> you lied. So I think right. they're uh, interpreting things differently. So Erica's like, well... I think that's all that. Like, quite honestly, it's in hindsight now. So, you know, remember that big fight? Remember how she, like, questioned your profession and, you know, said you were a liar and all that bullshit? Yeah, whatever. That's in hindsight. Because we can put things in hindsight. Now, who wants to give me an apology? Anyone? <laughs> you know, hindsight is best viewed through diamonds. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> She's like, well, what's important now is that Crystal's okay. And Garcelle's like, I agree. And now I'm going to take this opportunity because Dorit and I had more than a hiccup. There was something about how you talk to me. It made me feel a certain way. Taco Tuesday was a really rough night. <laughs> yeah, take it in isolation. That's a very funny sentence this show, to say. <laughs> this show. Taco Tuesday. These shows fucking kill me. It's like, let's go into a uh, talk about microaggressions. And let me intro that talk by saying, Taco Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Tuesday, wow. I, I felt my 
I just felt like I left my body. But that was mainly Crystal's attempt at making Mexican food. So uh, Dorit said, you know, when I said that, I, you know, when I wasn't thinking about, about, about race. Yes, yes, race. I didn't race. want to say it. Could be a bad word. Yes. <laughs> I'm allowed to say race. And Erica's like, well, I know you weren't. You don't think about a lot of things, you dumb fuck. Oh, I'm drunk. So Garcelle's like, yes, that's my whole point. She goes, yes, no, but, 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 but you called me a Karen. And I'm not a Karen. I'm a, if anything, I'm more of a mermaid. How nice. Well, I'm really glad that Garcelle didn't say, okay, you're not a Karen. Instead, she said, well, I don't think anyone's here, anyone here is racist. And um, I can just say, like, I don't think anybody here is racist, which implies you're still a Karen. Because you still are a Karen. I'm sorry. Yeah. Dorit, I mean, Dorita's uh, definitely had enough, like, Karen, Karen stuff in her folder there. So she's like, um, and that stuff, by the way, you can get past that and uh, grow and change. You know what I mean? It's not mm -hmm. like you have to be like that forever. In fact, please don't be like that forever. You know, it's okay. But yeah. Geez. So uh, Garcelle basically is like, look, I don't think anyone here is racist, but you know, there's certain things that make me feel a certain way. And like, my opinion is that you have lived a very sheltered life and you understand the walk that you and you don't understand the walk I've had to walk I just want to say that and it's like you know what I really really appreciate you saying that and I want to learn and know about your plight and just so you understand in my little bubble is also a bubble of plight but she and she tells her story about you know her father being Israeli and when she grew up she lived in a town where she was they were the only Jewish people and she got made fun of and people would say anti-Semitic things to her and ask if she had horns in her head stuff like that so she's kind of like you know showing that like you know she too has been the subject of discrimination and then she says like look I'm not trying to compare but I just didn't think it was a totally fair characterization of me and um, and she says you know if there's anything that I ever do that triggers you please let me know because I don't ever want to do that and then Garcelle's like you know listen thank you for sharing that because it's really good to know it's like well you don't have to yell at me about it I'm sitting right next to you. you. Don't have to attack me. All right. Well, that was a good talk. <laughs> well, that was we, a good talk. Seemed like we did well, but it actually was a, It actually was a good talk because Dorit was able to share some of her perspective. Garcelle like felt more understood by Dorit, and then Garcelle says, like, you know, I know we talk about huh, the Birkins and the bags and all the fashion, but this is the stuff that bonds us. Hearing the human experiences and the stories and. Things like that. That's what really makes us friends. You know, Kyle was like, so when do we go to Hermes? Are we going to go to Hermes soon? Anytime? Go to Hermes? You know what really bonds people? Hermes. <laughs> so. Let's go to Hermes. Uh, uh, so Sutton announces that her friends are going to come over for dinner. And she says, Trevor, a fr uh, friend of mine, since I was in my early 20s, he's going to join us. Because we started with Merce Cunningham. And uh, we started at the same time, and he moved to Barcelona a long time ago, but he's going to bring some architect friends. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I just want people to know there's just a part of me that's not just this, you know, alimony collecting, gala going, vodka drinking, esophagus closing, you know. <laughs> Let the mouse go, going. <laughs> Naming, namer. <laughs> name him, naming. <laughs> name him, naming wacky lady who loves karaoke. Okay. <laughs> so it's time to go shopping. Or well, they're actually they're supposed to like be going to the next event, but then um, some of them like Dorit and Kyle see a fan shop, and Sutton's like, "All right, well you got three minutes to shop." So they're all, they all go nuts. You know, this is where Kyle's like, "I can do stuff in three minutes. Trust me. You know, you should see me in a gas station. Do you know how easy it is for me to find something amazing in a gas station in three minutes?" I'm like, "Well, go to fucking Bucky's and try her like there, bitch." It's big. I'm just saying it's a big it's a big gas station. It's, it's a, a lot of one. stuff in there. It's yeah. a lot of stuff. It's you're gonna, need, you're gonna need more than three minutes. Um, so Dorit's like, I have a really good eye. So in three minutes, I'll be able to see exactly what I like. Wrap it up, pay for it, get it out. I've got nineteen fans in my purse. <laughs> They're nine hundred years old. Look, this one's of a spaceship. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look at this one. This is from the Middle Ages. It's of a mouse with big ears. And it says 100, an- 100 year anniversary. It's like, oh, that's just from Disney. This is one from Jesus' tomb. It's got Beyonce's face on it. <laughs> Look at this one. 500 years old, artisanally made. <laughs> Look, it's a little yellow creature with a lightning bolt tail named uh, <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> Uh, Actually, I loved her fans. I thought the fans were amazing. Also, now you we know can what say Dorit like? has fans. Oh, that's cute. Congrats, Dorit. <laughs> um, I hate fans. I like air conditioners, okay? <laughs> Fuck your fans. I, I raise you an air conditioner. I'm not, listen, I'm not a fan gay. I know there's like, at this point, I think about 90% of gays love doing the flop the fan open and do this thing, which I yeah. I enjoy watching it. The thing is that I'm bad at it. So yeah, when I do it, it, it's clunky. Yeah. And I think it's a sport because we're both bad at it. Yeah. <laughs> the fan. I, <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I just sort of like, I just sort of like move the fan from left to right. I don't actually open the fan. It like doesn't open up. And then like, I'm not bad at fluttering the fan. So I'll just watch the fan. But no. um, I'm not going to actually get the fan. I'm not going to be a fan gay. Yeah, I'm not a fan gay either. Um, so Erica's like, okay, okay, listen, love, we need to be budget conscious. I get it, but it would be nice if someone walked in here with about $100 million right now. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed. I laughed right now at that. So um, they buy, and Kyle just buys like a ring that doesn't even fit her. She just buys it. So that's great. And um, now they go back to the house and Crystal's like lying on the bed and she's, you know, she's saying how her family has a history of high blood pressure and hypertension and something that she struggled with and she didn't realize it could get to this point. And she's just like really, she's like really, she's just like on the bed and she's like very emotional and everything. And I mean, um, look, there were a lot of people who were worried that Crystal wasn't going to do much this season and guys, blood pressure. So, <laughs> Well, I'm just as she started to do something, her body was like, stop that. I also liked when, do you remember when they when they walked in and they're like, hi, Crystal, hi, Crystal. And Eric goes, hi, Crystal. And someone goes, you're loud. Because <laughs> <laughs> Erica's on one this whole episode. <laughs> like, who is this person? So um, and Crystal's like, okay, guys, well, I'm back, but I have to take it easy. I'm not going to drink. And Kyle's like, join the club. I'm not drinking. Huh. I wonder if everyone's going to accuse you of having... An affair with a beautiful country star. <laughs> Erica goes, oh, God, the sober Susies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least there's someone on Bravo who is, like, rolling their eyes at the, <laughs> at the huge amounts of probably very healthy sobriety that's happening. Yeah, well, this whole cast is. I mean, Sutton's like, disgusting. Not drinking. She must be cheating. <laughs> I know. So <laughs> glam squads arrive, and... um uh, more glam squads. Garcelle's glam squad tells her that the paella is going to be very authentic. I'm like, I love that the glam squad is on the paella beat. Like, we just heard a word on the street. This is authentic paella. So get ready. And then uh, Sutton is, uh, she's like, this day has been crazy. And you know, it's because Mercury is in retrograde. Um, which I think is like everybody's mom's thing to say. Like moms have finally figured out Mercury being in retrograde and now it's suddenly the fault of fucking everything. It's like, <laughs> my God, oh, you're traumatized by religion? Really? Well, Mercury must be in retrograde. Um, my favorite, my mom thing that she just said again the other day was, I'm taking this online. Like when she's <laughs> mad at somebody for not getting the service she wants. Like the lady at Dillard's pissed her off. I'm taking this online. Okay, so then um, Kyle tries to FaceTime Maurizio, and he keeps, bla- you know, the phone keeps going dead, and she gets mad at him for it, because oh, yeah. that's her season. You know, guys, they're for- very close to a divorce. You know, you know a marriage is going south when um, reception's bad in a parking garage. It's like, oh, my God. Can't they ever work out their issues? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then- so now we get to the part I need you for, because you're intelligent, and I oh, don't have that. Really? So Erica's like, so now we have to entertain Sutton's friends, guys. She's talking to her makeup crew, Laya, et cetera. And has Laya always been part of her makeup crew? I thought Laya was her assistant. So. That's Laya, I, right? I thought it was Laya, but I don't, I don't know. A lot of, the, a lot of the, the glam and assistants look the same to me. I think Laya has just had to learn 
new jobs over the years. It's like, you want to stay here? You're going to learn more jobs. Now put together the shelf and get my eyeshadow on. Not necessarily in that order. Oh, can't say reliable without lying. <laughs> Well, so, I got my I got my lashes put on. Unfortunately, there's also an L wrench glued to my eye. And my new girl's still invoice. getting used. To it. It's like ow, ow my eye. She's still getting used to it. She actually put it on with gorilla glue, so it's gonna be tough to get that off of there. Ow. <laughs> Hold on, I'm well, gonna do some warm ups while I try and work this thing off my. Well, so now we're gonna have to entertain Sutton's friends out here with this paella cooking. And Sutton described them as erudite, E-R-U-D-I-T-E, erudite, thank you very much. And anyway, it means sophisticated and educated. Whatever. <laughs> okay, that, oh. that's what I needed you for. Is that how you say it? And is that what it erudite? means? Yeah. yeah. Erudite means like, it is what they put up on screen, which is, it's, yeah, it is. I don't know if the exact definition is sophisticated and educated, but it's basically like learned and yeah great I knowledge or learning up. i looked it up yeah having great knowledge or learning so um which is like anathema on this group like they're like oh my god <laughs> great knowledge of <and> learning <laughs> in beverly hills in this town we don't have that so uh so sudden now goes to dinner she knocks on she knocks on garcelle's door using Merce's box and then she's like oh god not Merce to knock on the door god i'm terrible and then uh Erica's still going off. She goes, Oh yeah, I shouldn't have talked to shit about me and those earrings. Reversal of fortune, honey. I told them. What is she talking about? And uh, what... I guess she's talking about she's having a reversal of fortune because she still believes that she's getting these million dollar earrings back or whatever. And so Laya's like, that's how it be sometimes. And she goes, Yeah, that's how it be. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Reversal of Fortune a movie with Jeremy Irons where he like kills his wife? I don't know. Yes. Um, and Outrageous Fortune was where Shelley Long and Bette Midler probably fought behind the scenes for what, six months? How long does it take to make a movie? Do you think And Wheel of Fortune other? is where Erica learned the word Erudite. E I U D I T Z. No, I'm sorry, ma'am. You got that wrong. <sighs> Um, so yeah, um, they're like, you're wasted. And she goes, yeah, so what about it? Bottom line, I'm drunk. So here's what happened today. Crystal died. And then she came back to life. We had lunch. And she talked about marrying the guy who made the fucking Lion King. Yeah, no shit, we know. Go back to hell, <laughs> bitch. I just hope this new crystal is like a comma, lighter crystal. Like a crystal light. Something like that. <laughs> so, Erica's... Erica's like, uh, and then, and then Laya's like, well, you're going to become a paella making master. Yeah. I don't even know how to make a bacon, egg, and cheese. Like, what even are the ingredients in that thing? <laughs> it's in the name. So Trevor shows up with his architect friends. Trevor is Sutton's friend from school, and they're labeled the erudites. I love the erudites. They do not fit in on Bravo. They are representatives of what Bravo used to be pre-2001. <laughs> They're like, oh, Bravo. I used to love watching my weekly opera on that network. I would be an honor for us to show up. <laughs> How wonderful to finally be on the inside of the actor's oh. studio. Hmm? I recently took in a performance of Tosca that was absolutely magnificent. I would love to share it with your audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Sutton's like, wow, you sure brought some beautiful people. And so we meet all the people. And uh, Sutton says that she hasn't seen Trevor in a few years. And basically, she's just saying hi to all these people. And then she tells us, I haven't seen Trevor. But, you know, we uh, just used to get in trouble together. Uh, it's how I learned words like conflama. And it says slang, conflict and drama. Or uh, for cockty. And then it says Yiddish for fucked up. <laughs> and what teabagging was. <laughs> and they're like, what do you think about teabagging? She goes, you know, I'm not opposed to it. You know, I mean, how else are you going to make your tea, right? It's like, um, <laughs> did you really learn about teabagging? <laughs> so the erudites are there. They're in the courtyard. And, um, every, you know, all the housewives are on their best behavior. And um, so Trevor, and Erica Trevor's first line, up. he sees Erica. So Erica's like really, um, she's got this amazing, like green, gr like a green and black uh, snakeskin dress on. It's like very like, boom. Yeah. So she comes out in this dress and um, <laughs> she's drunk and he goes, 
Erica, I'm afraid you're gonna fall, like, topple over. <laughs> I wanna offer you my hand, Erica. You wanna take my hand? And she's like, ah, Shella, what's your name? What's your name, honey? And he's like, Trevor. And she goes, oh, nice to meet you. So you're the one we've been hearing so much about today. Well, son, what a woman, am I right? <laughs> And Dorit's like, how can you tell if, so if Erica's drunk? Sutton, you're a beautiful soul. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch is lathered. <laughs> I, love what, I love when Dorit does her weird croaking voice. <laughs> ah, she does her Betty Rebel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and Erica's like, hey, Sutton. Oh, I was just over here saying nice things about you. What now? What now? What's your face? Yeah, where's your cocktail? And he goes, oh, you should go ahead and get your cocktail. She's like, yeah, you go ahead. You go ahead. You do it. You do it. You do it. <laughs> Listen, who's more of a gay icon here? Move your ass, bitch. <laughs> so lots of people are, like, showing up, and um, it's great. So then Storm, the hot chef, comes in. And uh, he takes them to the paella. It's time to start cooking paella. And actually, the other paella master is Storm's dad, who is like a dilf. And so they are, Garcelle's like very happy. She's like, oh, how are you? Ha, ha, ha. And the guy, he's like, he's like, oh, very good. Thank you very much. Have you ever had paella before? She's like, no, first time. And how long have you been cooking? Because I'll tell you how long my lines have been. Years, I'll tell you, I get in my own paella pan, uh, sir. He's like, well, I've been cooking for 30 years. I was a chef in the beginning, and then Storm would always help me. He's my son. She's like, oh, God, I thought there was a resemblance. I love that. I'm fucking both of them. <laughs> uh, I'm a real storm chaser. So Crystal's, they're just like giggling and stuff. And uh, Garcelle's like, oh, forget the child. Huh. And Chris goes, here comes daddy. You know that Emery was like, oh, is he on the phone? <laughs> so uh, so then Garcelle's just saying how she's like, oh, I could really see myself moving to Spain, learning the language, being with Storm's daddy. <laughs> Come to mama. So now it's uh, everyone's gathering around the big paella making scene, and one of the lady friends is like, "Oh, are you starting the paella now, sir?" And he's like, "We are." And Garcelle's like, "Trip that bitch, <laughs> <laughs> get away so from my man." So um, yeah, he's talking about how it's great to uh, cook the paella, and he can do it with his son now, and and this is. We don't really get any lessons from this paella thing, but that's fine. And yeah, I thought it was going to be a lesson, but it's not really a lesson. It's just them cooking. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, they're ogling him for a long time here. And uh, then Crystal's like, oh, by the way, Garcelle, I heard that you and uh, Dorit had a really good conversation today. And Garcelle says, yeah, it was a good conversation and tells her about that. And then meanwhile, Erica asks Emery uh, what she did today. No, she goes, you know what you did today? Uh, what she goes, what did, did I do? She goes, you let your profession ride over your personal, and it was really nice to see. It was really nice to see. Like when we were in church, that was a personal moment. But when I pat my puss, it's because I was staying professional in front of Jesus. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, I was wondering why you were doing that. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like checking for change in the couch. You never know what's going to fall out. Maybe Jesus would want some. Well, I did find the TiVo remote, so that was helpful. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for the compliment. And Crystal tells us that Amory was like really amazing today, and I just I saw a really kind and generous side, and it really makes me want to move forward with our friendship and start fresh. <laughs> Give it a Good minute. <laughs> so, so then Sutton is asking. Um, Trevor, where he put Merce. And he's like, I brought him out. He's on the ledge. He's on the ledge over there waiting for his hand. Uh, then one of the erudites raises their hand and says, uh, excuse me, did you say that we're here to see uh, Merce Cunningham? We were under the impression we were here to see Mayor Winningham. Is she not coming? <laughs> I just want to get clarification because I, I do have a VHS of St. Elmo's Fire. I was hoping she could sign <laughs> So no Mayor Winningham, only Merce. I told Cunningham. these people you were erudite. 
right, get it together. <laughs> Unless you yes, want to end but... up like Merce, get it together. Yes, but in between, you know, building iconic landmarks in Barcelona, I For need to watch my, 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 my movies. <laughs> I'm going to zip lock your ass in about two seconds. Shut up. <laughs> you look so stupid. No, no mayor. No mayor winning him. <laughs> no. What about her glasses? <laughs> so, um, let's see. So, Dorit's it's like, oh, look at me. I get to sit next to Trevor. <laughs> you did this on purpose, didn't you? <laughs> you flirtatious little mean. Kyle sits at the head of the table. She's like, oh, wow. Uh, thank you for joining me this evening. I actually like to think I'm fairly erudite also. Um, I work in the arts. You may have seen my future film, Halloween. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you don't think I'm an artist? You should see how quickly I can get a pack of peanut M&Ms out of a gas station. <laughs> um, if you happen to see a K on a country star and you're wondering, God, whoever did that was a real artist, that would be, that, that's me. That's me. I, I'm I'm working on my MFA. So, Trifa, I fully <laughs> expect you to divulge every single dirty detail about this one, Sutton. And he's like, <laughs> oh, she was so mean to me. I was really nice to Sutton back then. I tried to get her attention, and I threw paper clips over my shoulder. And she said, Trevor, you better stop it now in that southern bell tone that she has. I want to see a scene with Trevor and Jennifer. Not Jennifer. What's her name? Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, Jennifer Tilly. I want them both in the scene. Now, who's taking care of Merce? I'll take care of Merce if you let me. I'll, I'll take care of Merce. No, I'll let take care of Merce. <laughs> no, I will. <laughs> Two I, crazy pants. I loved Trevor. I, um, I was like, Trevor is literally... He is the gay best friend in every movie where a lady of a certain age goes to Europe. <laughs> I mean, I was like, this is, I mean, I, I, I would not be surprised if his character existed in 80 for Brady, but I just, I wouldn't know, but you know, I could see it. <laughs> see, I mean, it's of course not Europe, but I could still see like a Trevor type in that movie. I think it would actually be really good and funny well, and charming. He was probably at the premiere just saying, so Sutton always acted like she was in charge, even though she wasn't in charge. She's like, well, I was 26 years old. Sutton lived in Brooklyn, everybody. America goes, Brooklyn? What a dump. <laughs> uh, by the way, let's not, um, let's not, like, let's not breeze over the fact that Trevor used to throw paper clips at Sutton. <laughs> <laughs> he would just kept on throwing paper, throw paper clips at her just to get her attention, and you just know. So I was like, "Stop that! Stop that right now! Stop throwing those paper clips!" Okay. Well, it I does one make me wonder what the fuck kind of dance school this was that they had know, paper clips in the first place. It was odd. So then, uh, Sun tells us she's like, "Well, I was poor in New York City, and I would go to these places and buy like five dollar dresses. You know, I worked and I was." Truly independent, I loved it. I mean, surely Brooklyn dress still costs five dollars there, right? <laughs> I love when rich people were poor for like one year in college because their parents were like, "We're going to show how to really do it. They're going to have to buy their own groceries." And then they're like, "I've lived. I bought five dollar dresses for a year in Brooklyn. Ooh, it I changed had my nothing life. when I came to to New York. I just had Uncle Mittens and a fruit roll up." I had nothing, just an intern opening boxes at a magazine. Oh, so um, uh, she's telling uh, she's telling them, Trevor would arrange parties for the company up at the studio. And I was the studio manager, hence the paper clips, in case anyone was wondering, Ronnie. And I was like, we cannot have shoes on the studio floor. I did not like seeing shoes on the studio floor. We weren't, weren't those crazy times. Those were those were just crazy, crazy times. I hated shoes back then. <laughs> Fun fact: we would always put paper clips in Sutton's shoes. So then Dorit's like, "Oh, I like hearing about young Sutton. She was she was not always wealthy, but she does like to protect you." <laughs> It's me trying to do her laugh. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Also, how many fake brands are you wearing at one time? Why do you say that? So Garcelle's like, so sudden you hadn't met Christian yet back then? She goes, and Trevor's like, oh, yes, she had met Christian. How was Christian's girlfriend? They met. And Kyle's like, yeah, they met when she was 14 years old. And Erica goes, 14, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Barely old enough to get a job at Shakers. <laughs> She goes, yeah, well, we met so many amazing people. And it's like, and Trevor's like, oh, it was so much fun being with Merce. And Erica's like, look, can I say something about this Merce thing? Okay, I know you love Merce, but Merce is in a Ziploc bag, okay? <laughs> let's, let's just be honest for all you air you dots. You know what Ziploc even is, people? <laughs> Have you heard of a handy snack? I died. And Kyle's like, um, I don't know how many drinks that Erica's had, but she is very intoxicated. <laughs> it's not a good sign. <laughs> and Dorit's saying, well, I'm sorry, but I have to agree with you, Erica. Merce should not be in a Ziploc. Kyle's like, it should be like a little silk pouch or something. You know, I could find that at a gas station. And Sutton, Sutton's like, but this is how people carry ashes. I mean, they're usually in a big plastic bag. I mean, like you get your goldfish in. <laughs> <laughs> and Sutton goes, well, Kyle's mother's ashes are in the bathroom right now, so I don't know why she's giving me giving me guff. And Kyle looks mortified, and we see a flashback of Kyle <laughs> placing her mother's urn in her guest bath. Um, and Kyle's like, well, I got scared, you know, because I've just seen so many movies where they show people knocking him over and then getting vacuumed up. <laughs> I mean, mostly starring Jamie Lee Curtis, who, you know, I'm friends with. So what were we talking about? <laughs> I feel like Kyle had like a very traumatic experience watching Meet the Parents. <laughs> so Dorit is, uh, she's like, so, Monica, tell me, where are you from? I love Dorit's cocktail party voice. And Monica's like, I'm from Philadelphia, but I like to say I'm from the land where Beanie Siegel is king. Beanie Siegel! And Dorit goes, Beanie Siegel? <laughs> it's a Beanie Siegel. What's a Beanie Siegel? Beanie Siegel. Is that, is that like a is that like a bicycle but with beans? I'm confused. Is it a bean sickle that you lick to get the taste of beans? <laughs> is it bicycle? Ben, 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 basilica. You're from a, bas a basilica is there. Did she star in Funny Girl? <laughs> <laughs> and is she under the weather? So Monica is like, oh, you know who Beanie is? And I goes, hell fucking yeah, dude, yeah. And Monica goes, he's a rapper from Philadelphia that I love. And I was like, oh, Be Beanie Siegel. I'll, I'll have to look him up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is this the regular Google or the Spanish Google that I would find this on? Is, <laughs> is he related to Fred Siegel? Does he like beans, or is he just named after beans? <laughs> Do you, have you heard of George Segal? Very good actor. <laughs> That's his own stunts, I hear. Hmm? Katie Segal, love her work. Married with beans. <laughs> Seagulls, great birds, love them. Flock of bean goals. <laughs> Am I close to something here? <laughs> Waka Flaka Flame. That's a rapper. <laughs> Who so, has a podcast um, on the Wondery Network? Mm -hmm. Shout out. <laughs> so Sutton's like, so, Fernando, you build buildings in Barcelona because y'all have interest in things that you do, and none of these girls really do, so you should expand on that. Okay? <laughs> and he's like, sorry, but you are with the number one architect in Barcelona. Which is Benedetta Tagliabu. <laughs> Benedetta Tagliabu. <laughs> <laughs> and then we see Benedetta. She's like, oh, oh, he's very, he's very lovely. He's exaggerating. Huh, I'm just a mere architectural icon. But he's like, no, exaggerating. Know. Am I exaggerating when I say icon? Icon, <laughs> yes, queen. Literally <laughs> outside of my skin right now. Shaking, literally shaking. Icon. Yes, I, I, you know, I, yes, I, I, I have been known to build many beautiful things, but ah, build my work things. Is... You have not built things. You know what we call her here in Spain? Mother, madre, mother. <laughs> she has been known as the Mayor Winningham of architecture. <laughs> Speaking of the which... beast of you might say of architecture. <laughs> 
Jack and the Beanie Seagal stock. Great story. Great, great story. <laughs> oh, well, listen, I don't want to toot my own horn, but you should go to the uh, Santa Catarina Mercado because I did this. I did this. <laughs> oh, please, please, please. <sighs> enough, enough about me. I'm just a mere Benedetta Tagliaboo. So they're like, so Mira, what about you? And she's like, um, well, I was born in Sacramento, California, but I grew up in Beirut, Lebanon, then she Aleppo. Get, by the way, she has to get to the Beirut part quickly because at this table, you're like, well, I was born in Sacramento. <gasps> moving on, moving on. Moving on. Boring. Taxes, Ooh, taxes, stuff. taxes. That's all I hear. <laughs> Bureaucracy Spielberg. Hi, we had to go to Sacramento in season one to see Adrian's team, so we'd rather not bring up that city anymore. Yeah. So Mira's like, well, I was born in Sacramento, but I grew up in Beirut, Lebanon, then Aleppo, oh, thank Syria. God. Thank God. International again. Mm -hmm. Then Morocco, and then Cairo, Egypt. My father is Lebanese, and my mother is something else fascinating. Guess which? Who? Bin <laughs> Mayor Winningham, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, Ronnie. I'm from El Paso, Texas. <laughs> by way so, of Queens, New York. By way of Jupiter, Florida. By way of Astoria, New York. By way of Staten Island, New York. Austin, Texas. And then later in life, Los Angeles, California. And then, hold on, wait for it, Austin, Texas. My father is Lebanese. My mother is every kind of white lady you could imagine. <laughs> Curtain call, thank you, thank you. So Amira says her father's Lebanese and her mother's Palestinian from Gaza. And Eric goes, oh, so does that make you Muslim or Christian because Lebanese are also Christian? In case you haven't listened to Watch or Crap, it's podcast. And Amir goes, yes. Sunni, Mus Sunni Muslim, because we have also many different kinds of Muslims, right? And Eric goes, right, right, of course. Sunni, Shiites, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I love Sunni, I love Shiites, F word, C word, all that. You got all that going on, don't you? And all that kind of stuff. I love Erica Jane describes Islam. Sunni, Shiites, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> So Spent she... lots of time in the war room. <laughs> I was there when they, I was, I was there when they decided to, I don't know, I, was try, I, I ran out of steam on this one. But I am used to, <laughs> I'm drunk. I am used to dieting and socializing with erudites via Tom Girardi. Have you ever had a meal with a police commissioner where you had a five layer slice of chocolate cake? I have. So I didn't get the opportunity to go to college, so I have a high school education, but I have a genuine thirst to know things. Hey, that's, they love to talk, so I just ask a bunch of questions, provided they're not stuck up, looking down at you bitches, assholes. Hate them, hate the that. Uh, one thing that's always been super impressive about Erica is her memory. Really, really yes. good. I mean, it's, she, it's always been so good on this show, and it's also impressive because you wouldn't expect not for her to remember things, it's not that, but she just seems like such an LA type. You know, it's right. like she comes, she marries this really old, rich guy, spends a ton of money, like trying to make herself a star. And you just think vapid, you know? And there are people who I guess would ask questions in LA, but you know what there are not a lot of? People who actually listen <laughs> to what you're saying. Yes. And that's rare to see someone, especially of Erica's type, quote unquote, <laughs> that actually listens. Right. So um, so Amira's like, well, I'm an, I'm an urban planner and I worked on the down, on downtown Beirut, you know, after the Civil War. And in the 80s, you know, there was a 15 year Civil War. And it was, right, right, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> like, and they, they worked on the seed bank in Aleppo, Syria. Oh yeah, well, Fertile Crescent. Know about that? Fertile Crescent, right? Am I right? Fertile, uh, girls, am I right? Fertile it's, a fer it's, fertile a, it's a fertile croissant. Am I right? right? Now listen here. Yeah. We used to call croissant. that croissant cr fertile myrtle. Right. <laughs> beanie, 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 beanie croissant crescent. 
Fertile. And Amira is like, it's the fertile crescent. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Oh, really? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna give me pronunciation lessons? But now listen here. I was told Beirut was almost like Los Angeles in the sense that it was the sea to the mountains in the snow where people roll their cars multiple times. You've heard of that, right? You've heard of cars roll multiple times down cliffs. Exactly, but they have a very easy time rolling down the cliffs because I designed all the roads. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wow. <laughs> and there's still a civil war there? Yes. Oh, and everyone's like, wow, how did, everyone, how did Erica... How does Erica know all this stuff? <laughs> I, don't, I love when Garcelle goes, who are you? <laughs> and then Amir, Amira says, well, actually, I'll let you do this line because I have to feel like you have a better pronunciation than I will. Um, no, I, I won't. No, okay, okay. So she's like, I don't know if you've ever heard of Khabran Khalil Gibran, the prophet. And Eric goes, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he played basketball in my chapel once. You know, it's not really the size for that, but I said, you go, girl. You know, one of the best. We played horse in there, basically. You know, I he got to eat he, first. Shocker. I heard right. was a very influential rapper. Khabran <laughs> Siegel? Is that what you said? Just Prophet Beanie Khalil! <laughs> uh, are we in trouble? I'm not sure. So Garcelle's like... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We're coming from a place of ignorance. We have no idea. So Garcelle's like, who are you even? I mean, it's actually impressive. And Erica goes, Long story, honey. <laughs> Dory says, It's like watching a drunk rain man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds <laughs> uh, like, y'all, this is such a complete pleasure. Um, kind of a befuddling pleasure, but it's a complete pleasure nonetheless. And you know, I've got Merce right here. And there he goes, Merce is in the purse! <laughs> <laughs> and Garcelle's like, I could watch this all night. <laughs> well, Mercer's been with me now for over 10 years, and as my son pointed out, and I can't wait to spread Merce around here in this beautiful sea, but as my son pointed out, he's been in my purse for 10 years, um, and he probably smells like TikToks right about now, which, let's face it, he probably he probably does. So compliments to our chefs, okay? Uh, we scared him away, and by we, I mean Garcelle. <laughs> okay, Garcelle, <laughs> done enough. I think that they were looking for Mayor Winningham. They were very disappointed. <laughs> so, uh, Garcelle's like, yes, I, I think the, I think the father's in my room. <laughs> so then, um, uh, Erica goes, when you're done with him, give him Viagra and send him over to my baby. So then, uh, everybody is like giving a toast and then the Real Housewives are like, goodbye now. Okay. They're like, goodbye. I don't know why we've been forced to spend time with you people, but goodbye. <laughs> Enjoy yeah. going back to building food courts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So inside, Gar yeah, Garcelle, they're sort of like playing around. Kyle is doing, this is the this is the best side of Kyle. You know, I think that even though Kyle still will drive me nuts, I think she's by and large having an okay season, a better season than in the, in the past. And this is the best version of Kyle. Fitness Kyle running into the kitchen, urgently going through the pantry to find some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was real. <laughs> yeah, that was a real moment. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Um, back outside, Trevor and Sutton are talking, and uh, Trevor's like, "You were kind of a goody two shoes back in school, huh, Suts?" Hmm. And she's like, "Well, I wasn't a goody two shoes. It's just more like I had paper clips in two of my shoes." Well, you just weren't as comfortable in your own skin as you are today. You've really come into your own set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that's why I always call you lady. Because for me, we're going to just go out and become a beautiful lady. And you did. <laughs> you sure did. You left New York City and now look at you. A beautiful lady. Could you think of some examples that I may be similar to? Off the top of your head, by any chance, there, Trevor? You're right where you're supposed to be, where beautiful ladies are. I want some examples. Name them. Name them. Well, um. Name them. Martha Name Dump them. Truck. Name them. Um, 
Selima. Name them. <laughs> Ruth Buzzy. I'll accept that. Um, so, so it was a nice moment. And now it's the next morning and everyone's like waking up and doing their morning stuff and everything. And some of them are hungover. Erica's hungover. And uh, Kyle's like, you are so funny. I'm like, dad, like, what did I do? <laughs> and then we see 12 hours earlier. They're like, Mercy's in the purse. <laughs> Oh, so now Garcelle goes to Crystal's room to check on her, and Crystal's setting up her little blood pressure thingy. And she's like, oh, well, having high blood pressure is something that you have to stay on top of, and it runs in my family. And I think she just needs to calm down, and if she gets all riled up, that's not going to happen. So, oh, gosh, I just hope I'm ready to do a blood pressure scene. Here we go. All right, I've done your blood pressure. It's a little high now. It's 151 over 110, but that's okay. It's gonna. It's not going to go down overnight, you know? It's gone down, right? Are we still in this scene? Am I still here? Are the cameras still on? Because I'm, I'm literally dying here. Don't worry. Kyle Richards here to relieve you. Hi, I'm Kyle Richards. I once played a nurse on ER. Oh, my God. The blood pressure's high. We got to get her into an operating room stat. Thank you so much. That was from ER... 1994 to 2005. Um, So Garcelle's like, oh, wow, Erica was pretty funny last night, huh? And Crystal says, yeah, you know, uh, I don't I don't know that Sutton was that happy with it. And Crystal's like, oh, no. So then we see um, Sutton taking flower lays out of the fridge and giving them to everybody. And she stops at Kyle's room and Kyle's like, oh, my God, look at those pajamas. Those are not for sleeping. What are you doing in those pajamas? <laughs> those pajamas are insane. Kyle, what? can you pay attention to the to like the flowers that Sutton's giving you for like a memorial service here? By the way, also like Sutton's hair was like not done; it was sort of like down and long, and I loved it. I wish she would wear her hair like that more. So, um, just a little note from me. <laughs> so, uh, there, there, these are going to be some flower lays. They're going to do a ceremony for Mer, so just the lays out in the sea and they're going to float off, you know, the usual. And um, Sun says that this is, like, really important to her because, you know, there's, like, a lot of stuff that she's, like, internalized and that they all maybe internalize stuff and they need to release stuff. So, it's going to be a chance to come together. And then um, she's like, uh, you know, Kyle, you've had a tough year, too. And she goes, I didn't know you had, like, such a spiritual side of you, <laughs> you know? And she's like, I do. I do, Kyle. So then we cut to, speaking of spiritual sides, Dorit. She's like, Jika, I was expecting a bag of Doritos to answer the phone. <laughs> Jaggy, I know you have your soccer game today. How are you feeling? Have you had a beanie seagull? <laughs> So she's saying, PK is in London. My mom's with the kids, and my kids are fine. But I don't travel much. Why couldn't PK be home? Just so one parent's home. I would have liked that very, very much. Babe, don't worry. I got a special babysitter. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen. Berlin. Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> Watching this slow motion. All right, I've got to go, Jaggy. He's like, please don't leave me alone with her. <laughs> she keeps saying I took her breath away. She keeps trying. She tells me to sing a song, and then when I sing it, she puts her hands over my mouth and my nose, and I can't breathe. She's trying to take your breath away. Oh, where's Pinky? She won't let me win. She says I have to be in slow motion so she can watch. <laughs> But Lynn's a murderer. I knew it. <laughs> we have to go widening on the metro. So, so now Dorit is FaceTiming with her dog, Pumpkin. Um, okay. So then uh, everyone's <laughs> <Moving> getting... On. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Let's keep the show rolling, okay? It's Candace kind of Luann stage directing us. Moves and needs to be five hours. These recaps can only I'm be I'm having five the best hours. time. This is I'm having a great time with this recap, I have to say. I am. That's High blood good. pressure, Eddie for Brady, <laughs> Mayor Winningham. I'm hitting <laughs> all my favorites. It's a classic. It's an instant classic. Yeah. <laughs> and pro probably our last one, let's face it. I feel like when you go on and you just start talking about our health and like taking everything too lightly, we're both gonna stroke out tonight. So <laughs> enjoy our last podcast, everybody. By <laughs> the way, fun. Shout out to Tina Yothers. 
you know shout out to tina motherfucking yothers we mentioned her what i was it like a week ago or something like that shout out to tina the others we talked about her and guess what she threw us a follow on instagram we love Both, you tina the others we love now you, tina i know the others. that i know that your assistant or somebody was like this podcast talked about you so you followed us to see if we're posting crazy shit about you we will be now we love you tina yothers we love you come back into come my to life. the crappies come to the crappies tina yothers yeah tina yothers will you host the crappies <laughs> we just do the crappies for us <laughs> it would be nice to sit in the audience one year <laughs> take it away tina <laughs> tina's one woman show of i the love crappies. her Okay, um, so everyone's getting dressed and, um, you know, so, glam squads, etc. And then Sutton starts getting upset because this is the uh, Ashes. God, that whistle lisp. I hate having this whistle. It's I, I haven't changed my teeth, but the lisp has changed into the... I'm getting that Just put some myself. plastic in your mouth like I have. Nice little... Uh... Clear. Well, I forget. I forget the brand of mine. I've, I've got my little. I love that I'm getting more lispy and more musical as I get older because I'm like a I'm gayer and also more musical with a whistle. So anyway, you fit right um, in. Sutton, I'm avoiding emotions. Is, what, is what's happening to me because that's what I do when there's real emotion. I avoid it. I go into avoidance mode. Yeah, I mean, basically, this last scene is is very sad because. Um, the emotion of everything is really hitting Sutton. I mean, she has held on to these ashes for 10 or 12 years, which is a very long time. Uh, so I think that's probably, she tells actually a really sad story that like her father was cremated and they all, all got ashes, but she lost her ashes. They moved so many times that they lost the ashes and God, that she must, that's just, you can see how that eats her up. And so she really kind of like, Merce, she said, was like a father figure to her. So there's like a lot of the emotions with her father that are tied up in this and that she's sort of like not just scattering these for Merce, but in some ways she's scattering her father at her father's ashes too. And then she thinks about this. She thinks about her divorce and the three most important men in her life, her husband, her father and Merce. And there's just sort of like a conclusion to all these things happening. And it's just sort of hitting her like a, like a wall. It was very emotional. I was, I, I got teary, but I get teary at everything these days. Yeah. Um, it was sad. It was a really good episode, all in all. Had a great time. Great time. It was. Yeah. I loved it. I love these. Like, I love this dinner party. I want. I want to go to Europe and have a dinner party like that. I want to be. I want like erudites to come to my dinner party and make me feel special. Erudites. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, I don't think I know any. Is that mean to my friends? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know if I know it. I, I might know some. Wish I knew some erudites. I'm gonna go to like a gallery. You know what I know? <laughs> some sluts. Yeah, but then this is us. This is us mixing with erudites. Oh my goodness! I was just at this most amazing, amazing gallery, and then before that, I was at the Whitney Bicentennial. It was absolutely fabulous. Did you see it? The Biennial, I should say, not the Bicentennial. I was at the Biennial. Did you see it? Oh, fabulous. Kyle Richards is by. I think. I mean, it's not confirmed yet. It might be. She Ooh. might be. Uh, do you think it's for publicity? Is that an artist? They do mixed media. <laughs> she is an artist. She can shop anywhere. <laughs> Have you watched Real Housewives of Miami? It is hilarious. Oh my god! Wait, <laughs> tell me if this means anything to you. Receipts, proof, timeline, anything? Sure, they don't follow. It was in the New York Times. So, are you an erudite or uh, fake erudite? <laughs> <laughs> are you well, an erudite? Because uh, I don't think you're an erudite. Are you a stupid? Well, that's about the end of this, isn't it? I think, I think that's done it. Um, now we get to go talk about more religious stuff and try not to get triggered because we're going to go talk about Real Housewives of Miami next. And that's going to be a super fun one. So everybody come join us for that. We're going to talk about church some more. And yeah, um, it's we're going to great. This time it's Ben's turn to get triggered. And don't worry, Me. everybody. We're both going to go to the doctor and get our blood pressure taken care of and all yeah. that good stuff. And um, I did get Botox, so don't tell me I don't take care of my health, because I do. It's got anyway, toxed. I have some dogs to throw chicken at, so <laughs> we should probably wrap this up. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Go get tickets for the Crappy Awards, February 17th in L.A., or streaming, which possibly 
being hosted by Tina the others. We don't know. We're waiting to Possibly. hear. Possibly. But we are two <laughs> weeks away from this thing, I'd like to also yeah. add. It is two weeks away, so there is no time to waste. Get your tickets now. Yeah. And um, also, we're on video. Come see these. Crappens on Demand. <laughs> bonus episodes. Southern Hospitality uh, is our bonus episode this week. Check that out on Patreon. And guess what, Great. guys? We love you very much. Oh, also, Dwell Hello was super fun this week. Oh, that is yeah. our Wondery Plus show. Go check that you out. And we'll be back that. for Crappy Hour live on Instagram Live this coming Monday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time to talk all Bravo costs with you guys. Okay? There's a lot to talk about. You. A there is to talk lots, about. a lot's happening, guys. Join us for all of those 90 things we just did an advertisement for ourselves for. Okay. We love you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.